Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video, I wanted to do a personal review on a plugin. The plugin that I wanted to talk about today is called GM Live. It is a live coding solution for Game Maker Studio 1 and 2. I'd also like to say that I've not been given this plugin for free, nor is this a paid review. I actually purchased this product quite a long time ago, and the reason I'm doing this review is to give you as a developer a more in-depth perspective of this plugin, and I hope it will help you determine whether or not it fits your needs, and whether or not you're willing to spend that $29.95 American on it. Now, I will be putting the link to the plugin in the description so you can follow it or check it out yourself. But what I want to do first is show you kind of what it can do. Back in Game Maker Studio, I'll compile my uh, simple platformer that I have here. And you can see that I can move left and right. I can jump up and down and collide with platforms. I'd also like to point out that this platformer tutorial itself, you can find on my channel. Now, <laughs> skipping forward, uh, you will notice that I'm unable to make this platform jump here. And we don't have any double jump or anything like that, so that's just physically impossible. As a developer for Game Maker Studio, I know I'll have to close down my game, go into my player object, look for wherever I have my jump height, and then change my jump height. Once that's changed, I'll compile my game. I'll wait for the compile time once my game loads up. If I'm not in the room, I'll play my game until I get to that room, and then I will try the jump height. And you can see that 25 is working fine. Now that wasn't that bad, I mean the compile time was only a couple seconds, and I, we only have one room, so that's just a simple game. But if our game is much larger, we could be waiting up to a couple minutes before our game actually compiles, and then we have to play our game to get to that point, etc, etc. So you can see that waiting could, I mean it could take a long time. That's where GM Live comes in. So let me actually import the plugin itself. I've already downloaded the plugin, so I have a YYMP file and that's for Game Maker Studio 2. I'll just take it and drop it into my workspace. You can see that it's wanting, it's asking if it's okay to import that. I'll say yes. It'll list out any files. I can pick and add which ones I want. I'm just going to say add all and then import. Now we have a GM live object as well as some included files and then the plugin itself. In the GM Live object, we have a simple description here. Please don't forget to place this object in the first room. So let's do that now so we don't forget. We'll place it at the top there. And if we check it out, you can see that there's really not much code that we're able to edit here. It's pretty much all hidden behind these DLLs, which is totally fine. The one line that I wanted to point out here is at the bottom of this live init. This is a initialization call, and then we need to make sure that the IP address and the port match to the server that we're going to be running in just a second. If we go over to the included files, because I'm using Windows, I have this gm live servereexe I could just right click and say open externally, and it will run the program. I can see that it is now listening for my project on port 5100, and that matches the port that I'm using here. Because I'm using it on my local machine, I can leave localhost as is and not worry about that. So we're done with the object GM Live. The only thing that I need to do is tell the plugin what events I want it to listen to. Well, I can't really have it listen to the create event, but I can have it listen to the step event. So in here, all I have to do is write a small if statement, and this comes from the documentation. We could say if live call. So if we're doing something like updating, then we return um, return the live underscore result. And with that, our game is actually all set up. Let's go ahead and compile our game, and this might take a little bit longer because we have those included files, and we also have that plugin. Now, once our game has loaded, you can see here at the bottom we have some live events. If we check out our server, we also have one client listening, and we have two files ready. Now, our game hasn't changed at all. We can still jump. We can make that height because we left it at 25. But what I'm able to do is I can come into my game and into the step event, and I can go down to the bottom, and I can fool around with jump height. Now, I can't really fool around with the variable because it was done when the player was created, but I can come in here and I can say, you know what, I want my jump height only to be 10. Now, instead of saving, closing my game, and recompiling, all I have to do is save my project. And if I load up my game, the player is updated automatically. You can also see here at the bottom that it's reloaded the player step. So without any compiling or waiting, our player is, is automatically updated. So once again, I could change this to something like 40, and my player can just go all the way to the top of the screen. And that's pretty instantaneous. 
So I'm just going to set it back to jump height and my player is back to what it was. So without needing to close my game, uh, make the changes, recompile, play my game, I'm automatically able to see changes pretty much live here. Actually, let me show you one more thing and this will be live. I'm going to set this back to 20 just so we can come back. Uh, in my objects, I have a object GUI. I'll add that to my room and then I will open it up and you can see we have a draw event and all it does is draw a black rectangle around the room and then we have some comments here. I need to set this up for GM live so I'll have that if statement if live underscore call then return the live result and this just becomes a snippet that you kind of remember afterwards. So I'm gonna run my game. Once my game has loaded we should see a black bar across the top we know that our GUI is now in there and you can see it right here. So I'm going to pause for a second and I'm going to put my game here on the left in the server and GM, or sorry, <laughs> Game Maker Studio on the right. All right, with that magic done, um, you can see here we have our object draw GUI event and we have some comments in here. You see right here that we have our one client connected and it's still connected so we can go in here and in the drag GUI we can actually start writing this code and see it appear before our eyes so for example let's start with the padding of 24 and then we'll write a for statement we'll say for i equals zero i uh, is less than the object player lives that we currently have i plus plus so we're just basically um, cycling through the lives that our player has and we're just going to draw a sprite and we will use the sprite heart. We do not have any subframes so we'll just use zero. We want it to start at 10 plus the padding times whatever heart that we're on and then let's just say zero for the Y. Now if our code is correct we should be able to hit save and automatically you can see that now we have hearts up here and we didn't have to compile our game. So this is actually an extremely good, good part for live coding is we can be like, you know what, the Y position needs a little bit of more padding so I can use 10 and I can move it down. You can see it moves down automatically. I don't have to recompile and, or wait for anything. That's just pretty much instantaneous. If I don't like that padding, I can say, you know what, let's make it 28. And once I have it to something that I like, I can close my game and because I saved my files, I don't have to worry about making those changes. They're already done for me. So if I load my game back up, it's going to remember that I have all this stuff because it's just files I've already saved and it's going to be done automatically for me. Now, just like, sorry, just like before, we can actually go back into our player and in our step event, we can change the jump height from um, 20 to say something like five because at the very top here, we have this live call that will automatically update our player for us. So we can have all these things being automatically updated as we make our changes through Game Maker Studio. I hope that gives you enough perspective on the plugin itself as it helped me determine whether or not the plugin was a fit for me. And I definitely recommend this plugin itself. So I'm going to end the review of that. And I would like to thank my Patreons and a special shout out to Paul Dalton, who's chosen to support me on Patreon. If you like this video or any other videos on the channel and would like to get early access or help decide on what videos or what plugins to do next, please check out the Patreon page. Once again, thanks.